Hello everyone, good evening. Welcome to my channel, <coughs> STEM Cafe, where we make everything about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Comprehensive, assimilating, fun, enjoying. In this place, we make, we break everything into easy patterns so that it can be easy to recall and enjoy. Today we are treating conic section. Conic section is a topic that has been treated from centuries ago. Scientists, mathematicians have been interested in the topic and they have made a lot of findings. And with this, we have been able to develop our science and engineering in equipment and other stuff. We have applied this in several sections, and today we are going to do the basic aspects. Pony section is a very interesting topic, and today we will make it, we demystify everything about it. What do we really mean by conic section? How do we generate it? We generate conic sections by having nerves of code. And that's why we refer to it as conic section. Depth of code. And now, when this code is caught by a plane, that plane will generate certain shapes depending on the angle. Depending on the angle. If it cuts it parallel to the axis, Vertically, as in parallel to this place, we are going to have something like this, something like this. That will give us hyperbola. That will give us hyperbola. So it's going to be a shape like this, and a shape like this at the same time. That's what it's going to give us. But when it cuts it straight, like this, horizontally. It's going to give us the common shape that we are used to. It's going to give us seven. It's going to give us seven. And if the cutting is slant, if the cutting is slant, like this, it is going to give us a list. So it will be like this. That's what it's going to be like. It's going to give us ellipse. And if it cuts it like this, sorry, let me. So if it cuts it like this, parallel to this one. It's going to give us something like this. And that is parabola. Now, we have seen how these shapes are generated mainly. But mathematically, how do we analyze it? We analyze it by looking at certain things. Those who studied it, like Apollonius, Archimedes, mentioned them in the past. They have noticed some things about them, about these shapes. And we will start by telling you some important aspects. When we want to generate conic section, we consider the distance from two places. The distance from two places. They move in certain ratio. One, we talk about this is a directrix. This is a point we call focus on the um, axis, on the principal axis. Now, the distance from this place to this place, when we compare it, there is a ratio. It must be at a constant ratio for this conic section. It must be at a constant ratio. So. If this place exists on this, 
This one too. For all these ones, and this one, they are in constant ratio. And the ratio of this distance, F, this distance, PF over PD. We call it eccentricity. We call it eccentricity of that conic section. I still put all this, the, this explanation down in writing. I still write everything. But just for you to know, these are the important things that will make you to understand the whole thing about conic section. Now, with this, we generate standard formula for each conic section. Standard formula for each conic section. Let's start with parabola. Now let's look at parabola. I want you to look at it as form. It's not something that tough. Parabola is a conic section of which its distance from the focus is the same thing as its distance from the directrix. This is the focus. And what do we mean? To make the derivation of the formula easy, we put the vertex. The vertex at this point, 0, 0. The derivation of the formula, I want to make it easy. We put it at 0, 0, the origin. And the axis, x, the x axis, we make it to pass through the focus to cut the parabola into two equally. And with this, if you have said the distance from the focus is the same distance from the directrix, which means that the vertex, the distance of the vertex from focus is the same thing as the distance of the vertex from the directrix. Please get it. Now we can see that if we say the focus, the point of the focus is A0. And this point is at 0, 0. The directrix 2 should be minus A0. That is, the distance here must be equal to the distance here. That is clear now. Let's now pick a point P here with coordinates x, y. And we have said that E is equal to 1. Simple. Let's now bring this here. The distance here. And this one too. Please. I'm not drawing to scale. We can see that the distance of x to the directrix will cover A and C cover X here. Yeah. Please get it. The distance from here to here is X. The distance from here to here is A. So the total distance from P to the directrix is, let's call this place F. PF is equal to X plus A. Now, what's our distance from the focus? We know that P let me call this place G. Sorry. Let me call this place G. So this place will be F. I don't want to make some changes. This one will now be PF will be equal to X minus A square plus Y minus zero square. I believe that's clear now. This one is this. This one is this. Now, from our definition of parabola, we have said E equals to 1. Therefore, PF over PD is equal to E, which equals to 1. Then, PF is equal to PD. 
Therefore, PF squared is equal to PD squared. Straightforward. Let's equate it now. Therefore, x minus a squared plus y, no, y minus 0 is y squared is equal to x minus a, x plus a squared. x plus a squared. Now, I can now say y squared is equal to x plus a squared minus x minus a squared. And from here too, you can see that we have difference of two squares. So, y squared will be equal to x minus x plus a plus x minus a into x plus a minus x you no know, minus this plus a. What does that give us? What does that give us? X plus x. That's two x. A minus a zero. So y squared equals two x into x minus x zero. A plus a two a into two a. So what does that give us at the end of the day? It gives us y squared equals four a x. That is the standard equation of a parabola that has its vertex as the origin and whose a is the focus. Can you get it? So, for this, we can see that the vertex is 0, 0. A is the focus. And from this, we can see, we can know what our direct fix is. Our directrix will be equal to line x equals to minus a. As simple as that. Now, we can still shift the coordinates of the focus to another point. And that's what we are fitting next. So, we have now shifted the vertex of our parabola to point H, K. That is, we have shifted it to the right by H and upward by K. So this is our X and Y axis. This is our X axis and this is our Y axis. This is just like you are sliding a cardboard to the right and upward. That is all. So, you can see that every other thing shifts along with it. The focus shifted also by h plus a and k upwards the directrix also also shifted to h minus a and k at the same time so for parabola with vertex o 0 0 is y squared equals to 4 a x here a is the Focus. So now that we have shifted it, we can see that it will be y minus k squared equals to 4a into x minus h. No problem, I will show it to you now. This is our focus. Now, we have it our direct say. And this is xy, our point P, xy. Straightforward, we can see that our distance from x to directrix is going to be x minus h minus a. So let's call this one P. So like we did before, this place will be f, this place will be d. So PD will be equal to x minus h minus a and then our pf will, be, will, will give us please this is p this is f i want you to get it once it's fun 
P to F will now be square root of X minus H plus P all squares plus Y minus K all squares. Just like before, we know that our E equals to 1. Our E is 1. So this one is equal to this one. Therefore, let us square both sides. Pf squared is equal to Pd squared. Let's make this one. So x minus h plus a all squared plus y minus k all squared is equal to x minus h minus a all squared. We cannot subtract x minus h plus a brackets squared from both sides. So we have y minus k squared is equal to x minus h minus a squared minus x minus h plus a bracket or squared. Just like before, let's use our difference of squares. And this will give us x minus h minus a plus x minus h plus a into x minus h plus a minus x oh sorry this will be minus sorry This will be plus because when we are subtracting now, it will be plus h plus a. Now, this one is going to give us 2x and h minus h minus a. So this one will be minus h plus a minus h minus a. Let's bracket this. And this will give us this one we cancel. So we don't have any x in this place. We are going to have minus h plus a plus h plus a. So what does that give us at the end of the day? A cancels here, please. So we have 2x minus 2h. Here, h cancels here into 2a. So, this one will also give us 2 into, yeah, let's make it 2a into 2 into x minus h. I hope you can see that very well. Now, we have gotten to this place. We are still equating y minus k squared. So, we have y minus k squared equals 2 times 2, 4, 4a four into x minus h. Simple. So for this, our vertex is at point h, k. Please note the sign. If you have positive here, it means it is at minus h. Please note that. And our focus F, you know what that will be. Our F will be H plus A, K. So with this, you can know all the other points. The directrix will be H minus A. So it's straightforward. Straightforward. Now, we can still look into so many other things. We can get the tangents. We can get simplified formula for tangents. And normal. And any other thing that you might be asked to get from 
the parabola. Just using the formula. Let's see what we can achieve. Uh, please, before I go to the finding of formula for tangents and other stuff, I want you to know that you can also have parabola equation in this form. X squared equals 4ay or x minus h squared equals 4ay minus k. The only thing is the orientation of the curve, the way it will turn, that is all. We can also have a to be negative. Now, let's look at some instances. We have seen this one. This one is for y squared equals 4ax. We have drawn parabola. Just like this, our um, quadratic equation. So, we can see how it turns. In this place, A is positive. Now, if it goes like this, it will be y squared equals minus 4ax. But please, in this place, A is negative. A is positive. Now, if it is x squared x squared equals 4ay. We we'll have it like this. If it is x squared equals 4ay, when it is negative, a is negative, a is positive. So the same thing applies to when the vert vertex is moved away from the origin. The, the only thing that shows where the curve we turn to is A. Either it is positive or negative. Now, let's go into finding what we do if we have to find the equation of the normal, equation of the tangent. Now, let's go to tangent and normal to parabola. All you need to do is to differentiate at the point where you have to find the tangent or normal. Let's look at this. Form. Let's look at this. We have y squared equals 4ax. If you have to find tangents at the point x1, y1, all you need to do is to differentiate and you get your answer. See, okay, let's find equation of the tangents at point x1, y1. What do I do? I will differentiate. This is 2y dy dx is equal to 4a. Please, it is very important that you have at least basic knowledge, understanding of differentiation to be able to handle this. And then straight line equation. Very important. You can still search for our um, lecture on this. Now, dy dx is equal to 4a over 2y equals to 2a over y. So at the point x1, y1, and this we refer to as n, that's gradient. At point m, x1, y1, n will be equal to 2a over y1. So to make this easy for you, just do what? y minus y1 over x minus x1 is equal to n. 2a over y1. So, y minus y1 is equal to 2a over y1 into x minus x1. Straightforward. That's all. That is all. Sometimes you might be asked to prove certain formulas because there are some standard formulas of getting the um, what's it called? The tangents. Normal. If it is normal that you have to find at this point, we know that the products of the tangents which are perpendicular to each other is minus one. 
So you know that the gradient of tangents is equal to 2a over y1. Therefore, gradient of normal will be equal to minus 1 over 2a over y1. Minus y1 over 2a. So what's the the equation of the normal? Straight. It will just be y minus y1 is equal to minus y1 over 2a into x minus x1. See this point by given. That's all. Very easy. I still prove one or two um, equations we know for the tangents and normal. But well, I just want you to know that you don't need to cram anything. This is just the way out. Some of the questions they give, they might just tell you y square equal to 4ax. And they give you the uh, coordinates x1, y1. But when you test it in the equation, you will see that it does not work for the equation. Just look at this. Somebody says y square equals to 24x. And it says find the gradient at the point 2. Now, as I was saying, I said the equation given. If they give you something like y square equals 4ax, the coordinate given you must be applicable within the equation. If you apply that tangent formula, when this the coordinate given does not really, it's not really on the curve, you won't get the correct value using this equation given. For the standard equation given for finding the tangents or normal. Let's try to see one of the equations that we use. It's a straightforward equation, but you don't need to cram. Just once you know the way out, you can easily wriggle your way out of any exercise or questions given you. Now look at this. It's just to derive the formula for one or two tangents. It says prove that the equation of tangent to parabola y square equals to 4ax at point x1, y1 is y, y1 equals to 2a into x plus x1 and y minus k bracket into bracket y1 minus k equals 2a into x plus x1 minus 2h for parabola y minus k squared equals to 4a into x minus h. Well, just like for the circle, all you just the, all I just observe here is you replace one of the y's with y1 and one of the x with x1. And you get your equation to the tangent. Let's look at it. We have y squared equals to 4ax. Isn't it? Now, look at this. Differentiating this one, we have 2y dx equals to 4a. So we have dy dx equals to n equals to 4a over 2y equals to 2a over y. That's what we have here. Then, we know that the coordinate of the point is x1, y1. So we know that at this point, our n is equal to 2a over y1. y1 equals to 2a over n. Let's see what our x1 will be at this, at this point. We know that y1 squared is equal to 
4 in x1. This is on the same curve. You can now see 2a over n times 2a over n. That is why 1 squared is equal to 4ax1. So, so our x1 is equal to a over m squared. And our y1 is equal to 2a over n. Now, what is our um, what's our equation? We have okay, I don't even know this. You just need to say m equals 2a over y1. Simple. Straightforward. So you can now say y minus y1 over x minus x1. Please, look at this. Is equal to 2a over y1, which is equal to n. Now, let's do our cross multiplication. Straight away. We have y y1 minus y1 squared is equal to 2a into x minus 2a x1. But we know that y1 squared is equal to 4a x1. So let's change this one. y y1 minus 4a x1 is equal to 2ax minus 2ax1. So let's add 4ax1 to both sides. We have y, y1 is equal to 2ax minus 2ax1 plus 4ax1. And that gives us y, y1 equals 2ax plus 2ax1. So y, y1 is equal to 2a into x plus x1. So you can see, we replace, out of the y squared, we, we put one y1 here, and then y. And this x now, we break this equation into 2a into x plus x. So, we replace this x here with x1. And this one, we said it is y, y. So, we replace one of the y's with y1. One of the x's here with x1. So, that makes it so simple and straightforward to recall. So, that's the equation that we are asked to prove. So, let's look at the second one too now. Now, let's look at this. So, it will be 2 into y minus k dy dx equals 4a. So dy dx then is equals 4a over 2 into y minus k. Simple. Is equals to 2a over y minus k. You can see this. Now, we know that at the points we are searching for, we are trying to find the gradient for. The point is x1, y1. So at this point, our m is 2a over y1 minus k. Straight forward. Now, this is where we need to pay attention. We can see what our this thing will be y minus k squared is going to give us 4a into x minus h. But we 
before you go into that, let's quickly look at our tangents. You know that y1, y minus y1 over x minus x1 must give us m, which equals 2a over y1 minus k. 2a over y1 minus k. Now, we now cross multiply. We have y minus y1 into y1 minus k is equal to 2a into x minus x1. And we can see that our by expansion we have y y1 minus y k minus y1 squared plus y1 k is equal to 2a into x minus x1. Then we have y y1 minus y k minus y1 square. I want to complete the square. So I have plus two y1 k minus k squared minus y1 k plus k squared is equal to 2a into x minus x1. Now let's see what is completing the square will do for us. This one here, I have a complete square. So I'm going to have y, y1 minus y k minus y1 k plus k squared minus y1 minus k squared. Yes, y1 minus k squared. This will now give me y, y1 minus y k minus y1 k plus k squared. And you know from our equation, y1 minus k squared is going to give me 4a x minus h minus 4a x1 minus h. This will give me 2a into x minus x1. Please, I hope you are following. Now, let me add 4a into x1 minus h to both sides. So, I'm going to have y, y1 minus yk minus y1k plus k squared is equal to 2ax minus 2ax1 plus 4e x1 minus 4e h. 4e h. So that, that's what happens now. So let me factorize this one here now. I have y into y1 minus k minus k into y1 minus y1 minus k, yes. It's going to give me 2ax 
and look at this one plus 2a x1 minus 4ah. Let's bring everything down. It's going to give me y minus k into y1 minus k is equal to 2a is 6. Factor it up into x plus x1 minus 2h. So if you look at it, it's just like taking one of the y and changing it to y1. Take one of the x and changing it into x1. So if you look at it, it's going to be x minus h plus x1 minus h. So you have done what you are asked to do. So it's simple like this. But I will advise, don't guess. Always prove if you are asked to get anything in conic section. So if you have any questions, please, I would like you to appreciate our work by sharing, making comments, subscribing, and appreciating us. Thank you very much.